Hi, it's Mike Sheen with HHO Connection. I want to show you a little something I've been working on here lately. Um, I had a client out of Arizona contact me, saw my torch videos, was wondering if I would put together a torch system for her. She didn't feel comfortable putting all the different components herself and really, really didn't understand exactly what was going on. So uh, she basically contacted me and, and asked me to, to put together a system for her. And this is what I've come up with. Now, she, uh, she plans on melting different types of ores, different types of metals together, and was looking for something a little more powerful than I was able to put out with my 40 amp power supply. If you've seen my previous video, I have my 40 amp ham radio uh, power supply that I use, and I was able to get a nice little flame, probably about a four inch flame or so, off of my, uh, my number two torch tip. She wanted something a little more powerful than that, and we were trying to keep the cost down. Now, if you've shopped around for power supplies out there, uh, 12 volt DC power supplies, once you start going over 40 amps, it can get really pricey. My 40 amp power supply ran about $189. And once you start getting above that, I know the same company, Diamond Antenna, made a 60 amp version, but it was about $389. And there's some other nice units made by a company called Pyramid and Astron. Again, when you start getting into the higher amp ranges, the 75, 80 amp ranges, they get really pricey. So we're looking for a way to keep the cost down and yet still be able to adjust the flame size. It was really important to her that she take the flame size down from a little tiny flame all the way up to whatever the maximum that the cell could put out. So what I came up with, I found these power supplies over here. This is by a company called PowerMax. And these are 12 volt battery chargers slash power supplies for RVs. And they're very basic. They look a lot like a computer power supply. Uh, as you can see on the front of here, there you have an intake fan. There is no power switch on that. On the back of it, there's simply two wires where the positive and the negative wires go in. And other than that, you've just got an AC cord that comes out here. So in order to turn this thing on and off, you will have to connect it to a power strip. But that's, uh, you know, that's pretty simple stuff. You plug it in the power strip and just turn your main, uh, your main button on and off when you want to fire up the unit. This particular power supply is rated at 75 amps and I was able to get it at a good price. It was around $150. So if you try to, you know, you can see, you look around for any, any power supplies out there that in that amperage range, and you'll see that that's a pretty good price. But again, we wanted to be able to control the, uh, the flame size, and there is no voltage controller on here, so I've, I paired that up with this. This is a 150 amp PWM from Hydrogen Fuel Systems out of Hawaii. Uh, you've seen these on my website before. Um, this is probably bigger than you need but I wanted to go big on this. I didn't want to have any chances of the power supply burning out the PWM. So this is, 100 and, this is rated at 150 amps. I probably don't push the whole thing at more than about 55, maybe 60 amps max. Um, next to that, what you see here, this is a variation of the Green Fuel H2O 31 plate cell. Uh, Steve over at Green Fuel H2O was nice enough to, to put this together for me. It's basically two 31 plate cells side by side uh, with, with one big end plate to mount both of them in. Um, again, it's 31 plates on each side of this. You have two inputs going in uh, the front and the back, and then two outputs going in the front and the back. It makes for a lot of hoses, but it's a, it's a good beefy cell, and running it at 55 to 60 amps doesn't hurt it at all. Um, I could probably run it all day at that. Might be a little bit of circulation issue with a, with a tank this small. Uh, I'm actually shipping a little larger tank out to the person that's getting it. Uh, the next part of the, of the system that I set up for is this bubbler that I made right here. It's based on the design of my other um, bubblers and, and reservoirs that I've, that I've made in the past. I'm really happy with it. What I did is I took a little aquarium stone, these little blue round aquarium stones that fit perfectly in the bottom of this 3 inch uh, clear PVC tubing. This is Schedule 40 PVC tubing, 3 inches wide. Really heavy duty stuff. I, I put that, that round uh, filter, glued it into the bottom of here, it fit, fit really well. I feed the air coming, or the HHO coming out of the reservoir down the bottom of here, and you'll see when I fire it up, it makes for some really good bubbles. I'm real happy with this bubbler design. And of course, it has one of my flash protectors on the top, uh, pressure relief valves, I should say, flashback protectors. And other than that, uh, what, what, ships, what I'm shipping out with this is one of my big green um, flashback arresters that you've seen in the past. It's not mine, I should say. One, uh, it's, uh, it's one that's made by somebody else. But uh, that completes the system. And I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm really happy with this setup here, and I think I'm actually going to be offering this setup for sale. It's not on my website yet, but if anybody sees this video and is interested in me 
putting a system together like this for you. Uh, I've got one other variation on a smaller torch setup that I'll show you after this one uh, using the punch slimline cell for somebody who is looking for something a little smaller like maybe a jeweler's torch. I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera now and I'm going to fire the torch up for you and let you see what, it, see what the different flame size looks like in this configuration and show you the control that I have over it. Okay, so I fired up the system. As you can see, it's putting out some really good production. Um, I don't have an amp gauge on this right now, an amp meter on this. I did test it with one the other day and it was, uh, while well, it was warmed up like it is now, I was, put, I was pulling about 55 amps and I'm putting out just about exactly three liters a minute. It was just a hair under at 50 amps. When I got it up to 55, I was right about three liters a minute. And as you can see in the bubbler, it's really good production and I'm getting some really nice bubbles out of that bubbler. Okay, so I'm going to fire up the torch and I'm going to put it against this black background while I'm uh, adjusting it with the PWM so you can see what's going on with the flame size here. And right off the bat, you can see we're getting probably about an eight, about an eight inch flame off of that. It's probably eight, maybe even 10. It goes out further than, it goes out past where the eye can see. It actually gets invisible out here, but there's still plenty of heat out there. Now I'm gonna start adjusting the PWM and you'll see how small it can take the flame down to you. It goes. Smaller, smaller. Now you'll notice, I don't know if the, the microphone's probably not picking it up very well, but you start to hear a little high pitch sound coming off the power supply once the duty cycle gets, to, gets turned down at the PWM. I can hear it now, and as I turn it down, you can hear it more and more. Okay, I've got the, the flame size now, it's about as small as you're gonna wanna go. If I go any smaller than that, probably gonna risk getting a flashback. And right now, I don't know the amp draw, but I'm down to 10.777 volts. Um, one thing you will notice about when you use this PWM, uh, the power supply is actually putting out 13.6 um, volts, but even at full duty cycle, uh, I'm, not I'm not into electronics, I can't tell you exactly what's going on here, but now I now have it turned up full, and my volts at this point are only up to 12.10. So. I can't tell you what's going on there with the PWM. Uh, somebody who's more in electronics could tell you what's happening there. Now, if you did need an even bigger flame, and as long as you weren't going to do it for long runs, you could bypass the PWM completely and just go straight to the power supply and get 13.6 volts straight to your cell, which is going to give you an even bigger flame. I'll, uh, I'll disconnect the PWM and hook it up directly to the cell and give you an idea what that flame looks like. All right, I've taken the PWM out of, out of the, the equation here. You notice there's no PWM anymore. It's going straight from the power supply to the cell, and the voltage is only showing 12.56 volts. And the reason for that is I'm probably pulling too many amps. I think if you, if you throw too many amps at that power supply, I think it was like two-thirds of what it was rated at, it's going to start to pulse the signal, similar, similar to what a pulse width modulator does, only you have no control over it. And it's lowering the voltage going to the cell, probably because I'm just pulling too many amps. We probably need to weaken up the electrolyte, but uh, as you can see, it is just putting out a massive amount of gas. I haven't done a liter per minute test on it, but real quick, I'm just going to fire up the torch one more time so you can get an idea of just how big the flame size is without the PWM in line. Wow. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. I'll put it against this black background. Hopefully you can see it, but uh, that's got to be a good 12, at least 10 to 12 inch flame. I'm, see I'm visibly seeing it to right here. And it's probably extending out a little bit further than that. You could do some pretty serious melting with that. So again, if you go with a setup like this and you decide you want to do some short runs, uh, trying to get as much power out of the torch as possible, just eliminate the PWM. Uh, I would imagine that at full power like this, the cell probably is going to warm up pretty quick. You'd have to go again with a bigger reservoir to help compensate for that. So uh, I guess that does it for this particular setup. I'm going to do another quick video on, um, or one, one more quick setup with the punch slimline in line in a different PWM to give you an idea of another setup for jeweler's torch, something smaller than this. Okay, so if you don't need quite such a big flame, let's say you're a jeweler or you want a jeweler's torch, this setup might be better for you. What this one features is the punch HHO 5.0 slimline cell. If you haven't seen my earlier videos, this is what's neat about this one, how thin it is. This is a six plate cell, has four neutral plates in it, which means it will run a little bit hotter at the higher voltages. But it, uh, it makes it 
it makes for a really nice little range of flame. Everything from the, from the tiniest one that you saw earlier on up to about a four inch flame. Um, I would say amp wise, anything from 10 amps all the way up to 25 amps. So it's not, to, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, conservative on the power end and how much power it uses. Let me fire it up for you real quick. I'm going to turn it up all the way. Oh, real quick before I do fire it up, let me talk about this PWM. This is the other thing that's different about this particular setup. Uh, I've got the same 75 amp power supply that uh, can, I can get them in smaller, like a 55 would probably be better suited for this. This is probably a little overkill. But let's say we take a 55 amp power supply and we combine it with this 40 amp PWM. This is a current limiting PWM, same as the other one, but this one is made by Hydrogen Boost now. And one thing that I like about this is it allows more voltage through to the cell. I'm actually able to pull 13 volts, 13.03 volts to the cell right now, which is allowing me to get a little bit more production out of it. Again, you don't, I'm not a big fan of running them at high volts like this for long periods of time, especially with four neutral plates, but it's good for short runs if you need to, you know, blast some, some quick high flame on there and then turn it down after the fact. Okay, so let's fire it up. And okay, I'm going to go in tight. I'll put it against the black background again. And this is at full blast, 28.5 amps. And you know what? Let's just forget about the amps just for this test. It really, this is all about flame size. I had somebody question the other day uh, the accuracy of the, of the amp meter that was on this particular PWM. So don't worry about the amps. Let's just watch as I dial it down what happens to the flame size and just how much control you have over it. This PWM, uh, the potentiometer in here is really good and it, it allows you for some real precise control over your flame size. Okay, there's the, fl there's the flame at 100%. I'm going to start dialing it down. When you see the numbers drop, you'll see the flame size start to go down. I can take it down all the way to the lowest end on this particular PWM. It'll, make, it'll stop at 10 amps, or what it sees is 10 amps. And it can actually keep the flame going at its lowest setting right there. So you can see a, quite a good range there. I'll go back up one more time. Nice pretty blue flame. And there's full blast again. There you go. Well, there you go. If you need an HHO torch for your shop, if you're a jewelry maker, uh, I really recommend if you, if, you, if you need a torch for your shop to seriously consider uh, an HHO torch, whether you make your own, go through me, whatever. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. You never have to worry about noxious fumes. The only byproduct is water, and uh, there's something cool about not having to buy the gas. So if you're interested in putting together your own HHO uh, torch system like this, uh, come to my site, HHO Connection. I've got all the components on there. I don't have the power supplies or these particular PWMs on there just yet. I will be adding all this stuff to the site. In the meantime, before I update everything, if you're interested in one of these setups um, or something similar, you want something other custom made for you, contact me. Just drop me a line at mike at hhoconnection.com and we'll see what we can work out for you. Until then, take care.